Hi guys, so um, here I'm going to show you how I made the cover for the home themed uh, mixed media mini album. So um, here you can see I took one of the sheets from the Basic Grace Barista collection. Uh, I'm going to apply it onto another also 6x6 uh, uh, black matte board um, using the multimedia matte from Ranger. Um, one thing that you realize is I think I spread out a little bit too thinly, so I actually had to uh, recoat it because it was just not sticking. Uh, so maybe one of the um, tips for using uh, multimedia mat is really to apply just a little bit more. It shouldn't be like completely flat or just dry up too quickly and you can't really use the glue very well. So here you see me um, using scattered straw uh, distress ink to ink the edges. Um, and so this is just to give it a lot, a little bit of just yellow. Um, so the three colors, um, main colors I would say, that I've used for, uh, throughout the mini album and, and therefore for the cover is uh, yellow, um, blue and uh, red and the red is like a almost it's a it's a primary red color um, and the blue is like almost like a navy uh, dark sort of blue and the yellow is um, a little bit like an ochre yellow so you hear, see me here also using the DCWV um, um, cardstock which I ran through a uh, check it uh, um, embossing photo by Kaisercraft and instead of embossing I actually debossed it into the um, paper and just, just to give it a little bit more interest as you know, most people expect it to be uh, embossed uh, as well as uh, that you know when I put a little bit of like um, sandpaper through it and, and that's going to be on the non debossed area so which is like where the gold part is actually mostly and those which are sandpaper is going to um, absorb this um, distressed in black soot um, and, but most of the paper, uh, paper is going to be resisting it because it's foiled nature um, here I'm using also the black soot distress uh, uh, ink pad to further distress like the corners which are on just to give it a more complete finished look um, I'm going to now like put it onto the um, 6x6 uh, uh, background piece there so um, one of the things you need to realize is that when you're doing a piece that has like a made embossed area, with it, it's best to use really strong glue. So here I'm using some beacon screen one, and they always have a relatively uh, precise tip, so uh, it really helps in application. Um, and this is important because like there's not a lot of surface area if you use like, um, just a regular adhesive, it will not work as well. And another another alternative you can think of is actually glossy accents, but a glossy accent takes a while more to dry. Mm. And you will see um, actually uh, for the background, you see me um, using and, and together with emboss, which you realize they're actually like different sizes of pattern. So this is one of the important things if you're dealing using patterns is that you need to make sure that they are not um, about the same size because then they would just be too jarring. So just think about like what is the distance between each repeating uh, uh, element and make sure that that distance is different. Okay, so here you see me use some uh, anthology uh, products. This is uh, Big Dip uh, Ruby, which is like a nice primary red with just a tinge of gold uh, glitter inside. Um, and um, anthology's products uh, feels a little bit like a 3D gloss on um, with like really good quality uh, vibrant pigment, and that's really fun. And uh, I think, but I like most other products though that. Uh, it, it gives it that hint of glossiness but it doesn't take uh, too much focus onto it so um, it's it's really good because then you wouldn't look like uh, like it doesn't steal away the thunder from your focal point which uh, you will see later at the end um, and these stencils that you're seeing me uh, use they're actually um, the negative spaces from um, the uh, mixed medium thinlets from uh, Sizzix and, uh, and Tim Holtz so I actually ran them through to on a thick cardstock to make them into this uh, temporary homemade stencils and I guess you can use them for quite a period of time as well uh, if you use a thick enough cardstock so here um, you see me making some of my own uh, texture paste by mixing uh, the Ranger texture paste together with some faded jean uh, and the, the truth is that when you mix it up you're gonna get a lighter color than its true color because the texture paste is gonna dilute the color and well in some sense you really can't help it um, if you have distress uh, stains I suspect those uh, the intensity will probably stay 
uh, longer. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter as you see how um, I've uh, worked around it. And um, I also have a good um, strategic reason for actually mixing the paint. I'll, I'll explain that later. So um, here I'm using a black soot uh, distress paint to paint this uh, baroque panel. Um, and the, this is the thing I really like about the uh, distress paint uh, paints black soot is that the black is truly black and you can't really do this very much with um, most other scrapbooking products uh, out there right now because um, most of them give you like a, this almost charcoal-ish uh, black when you try to apply um, any sort of medium to it and so this black soot black is really black and uh, that's why I really appreciate it, uh, quite, uh, something quite about it. Um, another product I think that would probably work uh, to achieve this effect would probably be um, I think Black Tuxedo by the, the Mixed Media Ink um, uh, by Tsukuniko. Um, yeah, so here um, I, after I blue, blue, blue dry like the blue dry <laughs> heat gun the area um, I was ready to apply my um, distress, uh, not my texture paste, sorry about that and um, mix with the distressed uh, ink pad of uh, Faded Jean. Um, so um, one of the things I really like but love using this product is that because it really applies like frosting, it really doesn't bleed through as much as uh, even say Art Anthology. Uh, but I guess uh, both of them have their functions. Uh, Art Anthology gives a more like mixed media sort of look. Whereas um, this gives you slightly more precise um, because it really applies really like cake frosting. Um, Okay, and I'm gonna apply some more of that faded jean directly onto the, the, the texture paste because even at this stage it continues to take on color. And one of the reasons why I decided to um, pre mix the texture paste to take on like some hints of blue to begin with is that uh, onto the area. And I'm gonna see too much hints of white, and it's really difficult to um, try and cover that with, with, the, uh, with the ink pad um, as, as much as I, uh, I wish I could. So, um, but by using this method, you get a truly bluish uh, texture paste look, uh, which is very matte. Um, and there's like totally no gloss at all, which actually has an added sense of, I guess, interest, if you will. Um, and so you see me um, uh, now trying to punch out some uh, branches and, and, and leaves. So these are the, actually the new Tim Holtz Sizzix uh, punches large punches. So this is the branch punch and later you see me using the laurel uh, punch. And um, I'm really amazed by how well this um, punch actually punched up because uh, I mean, take into account that these um, shapes are actually quite complex and most of the other brands, uh, all of these stuck. Um, especially look at it, it, look at how intricate it could go. Um, and it's a punch, it's not a die, it's a punch. And I think that's uh, something I was really impressed with when I was using uh, this products and punches are usually a little a tad more um, uh, convenient than saying using um, uh, die cuts especially when they're like actually quite small so uh, you see me there trying to arrange my, my my leaves out so one of the advantages of using like this leafy shapes is that they help to break the shape of your um, uh, of your uh, of the very sharp corners that you know whether it's a baroque die or the just a general sense of uh, whole squared look um, it helps to uh, give some sort of like uh, variation and really um, and breaks that uh, very sharp uh, um, shape I mean, not that that's a bad shape is that sometimes if that's not the effect you're going for then uh, this is just one of those ways in which you could do it um, so there you see um, the, the application of like uh, the final few steps to make to completing this. Um, so I took one of the home Amazon stickers from uh, Seven Gypsies that says uh, H is for home uh, because the, the, the theme of the new album is about home and what's unique about Singapore and um, I wanted to have that you know, uh, be seen inside as the focus point of like what this meme was all about um, and so I wanted to have it like popped up so I actually did met it further on some uh some brown cutstock so that uh you know you can actually put dimensionals at the back to you know, to give it that pop. Um and you will see me put on some uh rather unique uh little things and this are one of those things that you can really think about making embellishments unique. Um I'm using some Singaporean stamps 
uh, about stamps that basically come in mails and I've always kept them um, and uh, to prepare for the stamps you just simply put them in water and then you know, the sticky side will get off and then you dry them later and what you get is that you get these stamps and I use these stamps uh, I mean of course you can use them for posting again but uh, as embellishments for this mini just to give it a more unique Singapore look and a lot of these stamps have like red and blue in them so they went really well uh, as you can see in this close up so and yellows as well so um, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time bye